Thank you. Um, I have a little bit of a challenge with um, 36 slides and 20 minutes. So uh, the slides are available, so please um, take a look at those in details when, uh, when I'm done. Okay, so I'm Bijal Sangani from EuroX. Um, EuroX is, uh, if you like, the sister organization of uh, LACIX, and I'm gonna talk a bit about that uh, later. Is the clicker not working? Okay, so um, we do, we have um, two forums a year. Um, we have a uh, website, database, and some tools, which is uh, what I'm gonna talk about later. We also have a report and different programs that can help uh, support um, and um, help grow internet exchange points around the world. Um, we have uh, a mailing list, newsletters, uh, different working groups, and of course we're on um, social media, so um, you can tap, us, uh, tap into us there. Um, at the moment we have um, 82 uh, member IXPs, um, 56 of those are from Europe and uh, 26 from the rest of the world. And we have the newest uh, members from uh, Morocco, uh, Casablanca IX, and um, Beirut IX in Lebanon. Uh, we have patrons, and patrons are kind of like our supporters um, who also um, provide us uh, support um, uh, when, when, uh, for, the, for the membership. Um, so, um, I'm here to talk about the IXP database and um, related tools. So, for that, a little bit of background is that um, the idea of the IXP database came from um, the Internet Exchange Point Federation. Uh, the Internet Exchange Point Federation, as you can see on the map, is um, the different IXPAs uh, uh, come together to build the um, federation. This was back in um, 2012 when an MOU was signed with APIX, which is the Asia um, uh, um, Exchange Point, uh, Internet Exchange Point Association, and uh, EuroIX and LACIX. And we did that in uh, 2012, and we formed the Internet Exchange Point Federation. AFIX, which is the African Associate, uh, Association, joined uh, the following year. So some of the key things that we plan to do together is to have a global IXP database, look at having some global IXP best common practices, um, automate data collection from internet exchange points, and plans to collaborate with other external um, databases as well. So here is the board of the um, Internet Exchange Point Federation. I'm sure you all know uh, Ariel and uh, Milton very well. So uh, you can also speak to them about this. So um, I'm just gonna flick through this, these slides on the, the database uh, on the website. We've just rebuilt the website. So take a look, there's some pretty interesting things there. Um, it's a lot more dynamic. And while we were doing this, we looked at um, re reworking the backend database. So what we've done is we've introduced something called an organization profile, and what this does is it gives, so many, many internet exchange points like we've heard today in Argentina and in Brazil, you have one organization which manages multiple internet exchange points within their country or um, region. And so for this reason, what we've done is we've introduced the organization profile, and within the organization profile, you then have um, the different um, internet exchange points that are within that, um, that are managed by that organization. Um, other information that is available on the, uh, in the database is um, the different ASNs that are connected uh, to the exchange point, um, also um, pricing, the different services, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, talk a bit more about this um, later on uh, with, with the different uh, matrices that we can show which summarize all this information. So um, we also have the ASN database, and um, this here is a summary of all the different ASNs that can be found um, in each region and also globally. And you'll see that there is also a list of unique ASNs which are found in each region as well, which is quite an interesting number to see um, the number of um, unique uh, ASNs which are only present in certain parts of the world which of course then helps peering coordinators uh, to determine which exchanges to go to if they're looking for certain ASNs that they want to connect to. 
Um, we also have the, within the ASN database uh, the most common ASs, so you can see how many um, internet exchange points are um, certain ASNs are connected to. So not only do you see the number of exchange points that they're connected to, but you can also click on the button and you can actually see a list of the, the, the different exchanges. So if you are looking to connect with that exchange, you can again go to that page, look at the list, and then see if there is any um, places that you're common uh, with where you want to connect. Um, we have a peering matrix. Again, this information is taken from the profile information from the internet exchange points, and it basically compares the different ASNs at different exchange points. And you can also see how many are common at, uh, at uh, um, certain internet exchange points or not common or, again, unique. And you can use all the tools that are available on the website to do this. Uh, we have a service matrix as well, and on here you can see a very quick snapshot. So if you're looking to um, join an internet exchange point and you want to just very quickly see what services they offer, so do they offer um, you know, jumbo frames or IPv6, uh, VLAN, um, out of hours assistance, and things like this, you can have a look on there and just get a quick snapshot. So you don't need to log into every single IXP website, but you can see all the information here in one place. Um, we've also uh, improved our search facility, so you can now uh, look un uh, under the search, you can search for ASNs, you can search for organizations, and you can search for IXPs. Um, and again, there is advanced options here that you can um, look at and see again which ASNs are where. So the, the, the database schema is in place for IXPs to uh, record their information about themselves and the operators that they serve. So those are the different ASNs. Um, there, the API is live at the moment, and you can find that on um, https db.ixf.net uh, api slash ixp. Um, What's, so what's next? The future plans we have with this is to extend and internationalize the admin interfaces for all IXPs. So at the moment, the, if you like, the human readable version of all this information that we collect um, via the IXPs is available on the URIX website. Now, of course, we want to extend that so that um, the a APIX, uh, LACIX, and AFIX also have their own interface for um, the, the local uh, regions. Um, and this allows things like um, you know, different languages to be supported and, and whatever else is needed specifically for that region. Uh, we also want to look at, um, at uh, creating some more bespoke um, a APIs. Um, again, you know, automation is, is, is very key, and there's lots of um, organizations that are driving to go towards automation, and you know, we're, we're a firm believer of that. Um, and of course, we want to improve the data and um, grow and cap grow the data and also get more data from the IXPs. We, from the um, IXP um, database, we've created an IXP member list uh, JSON schema. And what the JSON schema does is it contains both IXP data and IXP participant data. So for example, it has the ASN number, which is the, the member list, uh, locations of the um, IXPs, switches that are used at the IXPs, root servers, and et cetera, and et cetera. So when I talked about further development, one of the, some of the key things that we want to add is to add more information about actual like data centers that the IXPs are present at, and also add IP addressing. So it's an open, consistent, and atomic design. Um, we, there's currently 24 IXP uh, independent implementations in there. Um, and the API includes data from the URIX portal, which is entered either uh, manually currently or by um, CSV. Uh, we do have an uh, open source uh, implementation in IXP Manager, and more information about this can be found at the, uh, at the URL there. And um, again, everything is open source, so you can get to the uh, GitHub uh, source code uh, there as well. So you might sit there and think, well, you know, that's all well and good, but why don't I just get the information directly from the IXP? Well, 
one of the reasons that we decided to build this was because a lot of people were going to multiple IXPs and getting data and there was no standard format in collecting this data and you would just get you know, a data dump and then you would have to sort through it and figure out what was actually relevant and what you needed and what you didn't. So what this API does is it gives you a single API for many IXPs. So you get all the information on the IXPs and then you can filter what you, what you would like to see or not. Um, and again, it's standard, which is you know, something that I think we're all trying to drive towards. Um, and the data is fed directly from the IXPs. So the IXPs have the most accurate data, they own the data, and that's where we get the data from. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go through two examples of, um, of using the um, member list here. So uh, for those of you that like to um, have a bit of technical, or, or with uh, technical knowledge will be uh, definitely uh, interested in this. So I wanna thank Andy Davidson for the example. Um, so one question, you, you know, as a peer, you could say, right, if you want to join, once you join the Internet Exchange Point, who am I not peering with? So you've already set up, say, you know, 10, 15 peers, but you want to know who do I need to go and get peering with? So you have uh, your own script um, that uh, can load the direct adjacencies into an array, and you need to complete and you need a complete list of the ASNs that are currently connected to that IXP that you're looking to um, find more peers from. So you use this API, um, and this is uh, the, the config, your config, and you can collect the ASNs that, uh, this is the list of the ASNs that you are already connected to. So what this script does here at the bottom is it compares the number of ASNs that you're connected to um, and tells you with the number of ASNs at the exchange point, and it tells you, go get peering with whoever else um, you need to go get peering with. So when you're coming to forums like this, and you need to have a quick view of who do I need to speak to at um, the LACNIC meeting, um, you know, you can run this script very easily and see that these are the people that I need to connect to. So this is another use case, um, a, a different one, again, using the, the member list JSON schema. Um, this uh, defines a portable output format to export the list of members connected to an IXP. So for example, this can then fetch the list of clients and their attributes, so uh, the AS number, the max prefix limits, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, what it does is it automatically builds the clients.yml uh, file used by a root server. Uh, to generate root server configuration. So the, the client command you use is, is, is there, and um, the JSON file contains information about more than just one IXP. So like I mentioned earlier, where we've broken down organizations and the number of um, IXPs, so for example, AM6, AM6 is the organization, and they run a number of um, IXPs, uh, one of them being here in the Caribbean. So, and then what you want to do is you want to filter those clients which are connected to the IXPs because you want to, because of the information that you're looking for. And then once executed, um, the, the command prints all the list of IXPs and VLANs reported in the JSON file. And um, the IDs can be found um, by doing, running this script here. And this is another example uh, from uh, LONAP on, um, on getting that config um, um, produced. So I want to just say a quick thank you to Pierre Carlos for his work on this subject and more information on this. Uh, on this and a root server can be found on the uh, URL link there. So, you know, why are we doing this? Um, you know, what, what do we want? We want, to, we want to move into a world of automation so that we can avoid errors and mistakes on our configurations. Um, we're in search of accurate information. You know, we all want to make sure that the information that we have and the information, if we are going into uh, automation, that the information that you're putting into your routes, your root servers, your routers, and your configurations is all correct. So having this um, database, what it means is that peering networks can go to not just two, but multiple sources of um, data to guarantee accuracy. Um, we want to produce tools and a portal um, which is currently, like I said, available on the URIX website um, with future plans of development for APIX, LACIX, and um, AFIX. And, you know, this is something that, you know, I always say to the, uh, whenever we have the forums at URIX, is something that I kind of go on about is, 
making sure that the IXP data is updated regularly. Um, you know, there are multiple ways on doing this, and we are moving to to um, a, to be able to get this data uh, via APIs or any other kind of automation system that we can use. And the IXPAs have regional reach. So, um, you know, with the LAC-IX meetings, you know, the, the LAC-IX uh, board and, and uh, the administrators there should be encouraging you to make sure that your data is kept updated. Um, because this data is actually then used, is starting to be used in real life for um, configurations and, 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 and other things. So the data in the database is complementary to other databases, like the RIR databases, you know, when we talk about doing things like uh, who is lookups, um, and of course, peering DB. So, you know, this is a great way for these databases all to come together and work on building something that can be really, really useful for, for the community. So um, we are actually looking for some funding. Um, so far, the, fund the, the project has been funded by EuroIX. Um, and we're looking to continue this development, and the next stages include an interface to the database for all IXPAs, um, you know, fetching data from other databases like PeeringDB so that we can actually verify and um, validate the data. Um, we want to enhance the data set, and like I said, we want to add things like IP addressing from the IXPs and more details on location and of course outreach and training. So it's all fair and well saying, oh yeah, we've got this member list and IXPs should all be using it, but not all IXPs have the experience in doing this. So what, all, what we want to do as well is we want to reach out to the IXPs via the um, Internet Exchange Point Associations and train the IXPs on how they can actually do this so that it helps um, the community uh, you know, use the data and feel more confident that the data is accurate. If you're interested in um, supporting this project, um, please, uh, please come and talk to me. And that's all I have. Thank you. Un aplauso para Villa, por favor.